so hi everybody uh, hi three of you on the panel uh, pavan farida hey. and stanzan uh, and hi. to the audience that's viewing uh, this discussion we are very happy to have uh, all of you here uh, as part of the dharamshala uh, Fe international film festivals year round program which is called diff virtual R viewing room and today we are uh, presenting this discussion as part of the india new zealand indigenous film program uh, in collaboration with the new zealand high commission uh, all films are available to audiences uh, in india and the three indian films will be available to audiences in new in new zealand as well uh, and the screening dates are 13th to 19th apart from the indian films we are also screening uh, films from new zealand which are cousins meratta how mum de uh, decolonized the screen loy mata sweetest years um, the dharamshala film festival is a very very special uh, platform uh, when it existed physically it was just wonderful because it was so intimate and uh, it was such a uh, wonderful way to actually interact with audiences and film film uh, makers um, but i must say uh, the virtual viewing room has uh, extended this and actually made it possible for us to uh, continue this kind of intimate relationship both with the filmmakers and the films uh, that uh, are being screened uh, so today we have with us uh, three very uh, interesting filmmakers, uh, interesting for the um, kind of uh, work they've been doing, not only in terms of the content, but also uh, in terms of uh, uh, the ways they have chosen to tell their stories. Uh, so we have with us uh, Paban, uh, who is from Manipur, and uh, he has his, uh, well, his most well-known film or the film we all got to know him by was The Lady of the Lake, uh, which is called Loklak Lairembi. Uh, <laughs> sorry if it sounds wrong. No, no. <laughs> and it's, it had its uh, debut screening at the Busan International Film Festival. And then it has been screened uh, uh, all over the place. It's been really one of the most uh, important films that came out of Manipur in those years. Before that, he had done films on the AF, uh, AFSPA, that is the uh, uh, act that is in uh, place in Manipur at the moment, the 1958 act. And after Lady of the Lake, he has uh, he had made uh, he has now made a film called nine hills and one valley which i was lucky enough to just watch recently uh he he has studied formally he is uh, has studied filmmaking at the srfti uh that is the satyajit ray film institute uh so pavan uh tell us about uh, lady of the lake which is the film that is being screened here in this vir uh, virtual viewing room uh how did you come upon the subject? Uh, what is that journey that you took with the Lady of the Lake, actually? And uh, uh, could you just describe the whole process of filmmaking? Because it is a very interesting, it's a very difficult film to make. And then, uh, uh, you know, this line between what is fiction, what is documentary, how much did you make her actually uh, enact stuff? It would be interesting if you could just talk a little about that. Uh, and also, the, the no, sorry, the, the notion of the tribe and the, uh, I mean, the people who you yeah. did film. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Deep. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, well, uh, to begin with, I've been, you know, as you know, I've been doing documentaries for a long time. Uh, but, you know, as a, as a, you know, I grew up, watching feature films, so I always wanted to do fiction feature films. But then I think it's maybe it's the situation here. And maybe those days, you know, when I started uh, thinking of having a career in filmmaking, I think uh, documentary was easy. 
or maybe you know the place where i come from i think it was natural for me to go for documentary film making and uh, i wanted to continue that journey even in my fiction film making uh, you know maybe it's not an experiment for others but uh, for me i wanted to do you know just continue what i've been doing in documentary to you know when i'm making my debut feature film so you know it's it's a, it's very interesting for me you know doing this fiction film uh, actually i went to the lake to do the reiki of the fiction film and then i realized that you know if i have to do this fiction the way i have been doing documentaries i need to i need to know the people better i need to know the uh, you know location better so what i did was instantly i know i started uh, taking my camera and started shooting and you know for three years i continuously you know shot and i made a documentary first uh, before going for the fiction film uh so that i can understand my uh, you know the people and even even i wanted the characters you know i wanted non actors to act in the film so you know it was it was quite a good journey for me because i you know what documentary does for you is you make relationship with people you know you know the people better you know the place better so you know uh, so i made a documentary in between which was called floating life and uh, that really helped me because all those people who who were actually in the documentary they all came to help uh, me during the shooting of the fiction and they all acted in the film actually so when a lot of people uh, ask me whether they are actors or non actors i tell them that they are actors they have acted in my documentary uh, it's not about acting but you know when when they they are quite familiar to camera and so and and plus what i did uh, for myself was uh, the story actually the story was about gun gun culture in manipur you know the it was around 2011 when i started thinking of doing a fiction and the way uh, you know i've been doing documentaries uh, i i always want to tell stories about contemporary life my contemporary life in manipur so the idea that time the idea of gun culture gun you know whoever was having a gun was like a king in manipur I and mean, maybe it's the insurgents or the uh, army or wh- whoever have, was having the gun they were like king so i thought of a story uh, which was called gun nongmai in manipuri uh, but then i wanted to place it in uh, in the lake uh, because of the yeah it, it's it's a beautiful place and also the 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 people there it's quite interesting the people who stays in the lake on the floating hut so but then you know when when i went to the lake i realized that i need to mold the story a little bit it would be interesting to you know to change the characters so the documentary process actually helped me to you know mold my so- story in the the present situation the the life of the uh, indigenous people there because they were having some uh, they were also you know they were told to leave the place and they they were having this fear of you know uh, the army coming there or the local police coming there and throwing them out so you know i heard stories from them talking about you know gun and the fear of gun so i molded my story fiction story in their life and that's how the you know the the, the film came into be thanks babun uh we'll we'll come back to many of the points that you have raised about documentary about fiction about uh, people uh, but before that uh, i'll come to farida uh, farida uh, i remember seeing your film very many years ago at mif uh, mm-hmm. and being totally struck by it and struck by the uh, i hate to use it but uh, the almost feminine touch to the film uh which is uh, utterly uh, utterly moving uh in the the cycle of work life uh <clears throat> hardship uh of the people that you have uh, uh would you tell us about the process uh, what i would uh, really be interested to know is how did you get that i uh did you stay with them for a very long did you uh did they know you because uh, i mean uh, even though the film is really crafted through the seasons and 
but you know there are it's almost like there are protagonists there are uh, so if you could talk a little bit, a bit about the process of the making of the film Sure, thank you. Thank you for your comments, Pina. Um, yes, actually, uh, I had spent nearly five years uh, visiting the desert before I started shooting. So I would stay with different uh, salt worker families when I was there. And one of the families that one night, just by chance, that we knocked on the door and we stayed at was a Sanawai's family, the family you see in the film. And uh, I was really fascinated by him because he was a really fascinating character. He was very strong, very um, a very proud man, taking pride in what he did. And uh, we formed a kind of bond and I would keep visiting him uh, in the desert. And then even when they went back to the village during the four months that they're in the village, uh, I would visit him at home and then, you know, so that went on for nearly two or three years. And, uh, you know, I, attended his daughter's wedding and all of that. And so, uh, so I knew him and I knew his family well enough to, you know, to go right in and shoot. So we started right from the day they entered the desert to the day they leave the desert. And that was one full eight month cycle. Um, it was uh, also for me, I think what was very, uh, and you know what was important was that he wanted the film to be made and he was someone who wanted his work to be shown he, he for him it was a moment of pride to be filmed because he really believed he made the best salt uh, and i think that that was important and that participation that uh, collaboration was important otherwise i think it's really impossible to do it if the protagonists are not uh, ready or not are reluctant to be part of the process. And so, um, yeah, that's how we started shooting. Um, I mean, it, it. I had seen almost all the stages of the salt making process. I knew it, but I had never witnessed the first day that they arrive and the last day that they leave. And that was our first day of shooting and I was with uh, the cinematographer Lutz, and we had worked already on a previous film together, and uh, who didn't speak a word of Gujarati, or, or uh, and uh, and it was October. It was really hot, so it was a very difficult first few days. Also because I didn't know what to expect, I didn't know what was coming, and I must say that it took a while for us to get into a, a certain rhythm. And I think that is very important and it is very important to the final film. There is a certain rhythm of being there, of being accustomed to the place and the, the time scale that they work with. And I think that sort of, uh, it took a while, but we got there and uh, they became comfortable with the fact that we were shooting. I never had a full fledged, you know, can, uh, uh, like a camera with a boom mic and all when I would visit them before I would just take a small camera. So it took a while, but I think I think that was uh, for me also a learning experience. And uh, what about the children and the, uh, you know, the women who you uh, followed? Uh, uh, were they accepting? Uh, were, uh, were you able to and how and uh, did you have any uh, uh, script or was it just that you shot and you edited and you know you just put it together in terms of the rhythm of the time that uh... no I didn't have a script but I knew very clearly what I wanted because I had seen it with my own eyes very very uh, often and I knew that visually you could tell that story that you would not need commentary. I was very clear about that. I didn't want to do interviews. I didn't want to do commentary. Even much later in the process, I would get a lot of feedback saying, oh, you should go back and do interviews. I said, that's not my film. That's somebody else's film. I don't want to make that film. And uh, so the women and the children, of course, in the beginning, the, everybody was very curious about the, uh, the, um, the filming we were doing and all of that. But we started um, a nightly viewing of the material that we had shot that day. oh okay yeah so we would uh, have dinner all of us together you know we lived with oh. them in the hut we would have dinner and then they would be in the wife would say now don't start till i've finished washing all the vessels and put everything away and then you start 
and then they would gather around the you know the khatia that we would sit on and we would uh, because we had to download all the stuff so anyway they we would were, see it uh -huh. and they would watch it while we were downloading so it became a daily rhythm while we were there oh that's really interesting so they were in fact also just watching themselves as they you were and enjoying it giggling at some point in some acha oh that's really interesting i mean just as a process to have your um you know your whole subjects also in a sense not subjects but the uh, the community going along with the film is quite an interesting uh, process i must say uh i'll now come to stanzin sorry i didn't uh, introduce farida farida is a um uh, uh, mfa from the university of illinois Uh, uh my name is salt is her first feature documentary but she's done a lot of work and i think you've just done a film uh, uh what's it called sorry farida watch over me yeah she's just on finished the film called uh, on palliative care called watch over me uh stan stanzin dorje gya is a filmmaker who lives in ladakh and he has sort of made it his mission uh to share with viewers stories uh, of you know the the challenges of the high himalayas uh, his films have been uh, all based in ladakh and uh, uh, the work he has done is basically to uh, show uh, what it is like to be living up there uh, the film that is screening here is called the shepherdish uh, shepherdess of the great glaciers uh it's an amazing film with an amazing protagonist uh, uh did you know her how did you find her and where is she now uh, thank you thank you ma'am ah uh, yeah like uh, uh, the shepherds of the glaciers uh, when uh, we are thinking to make this movie uh, before that i got a Uh, another opportunity to make jungwa uh, uh, the broken balance uh, in 2010 uh, uh, it was a nightmare in ladakh so uh, we used to see the snow but we are not used to have the rain so overnight it was like a big flash flood and then <clears throat> so many parents lost their children so many children lost their parents you know and then somehow with this movie i was traveling to different countries in the world and then i realized you know people wanted to know about ladakh and there is a pashmina wool uh, which we call kashmir or pashmina wool is it is very expensive in the world but this is who growing you know that was like the shepherds and shepherds in ladakh and uh, today ladakh is very well known for many people uh, because of uh, this um, high himalaya cold desert but then uh, yes it is the not only the beautiful mountain what you see in in behind this mountain how the people live you know how their culture you know and then as uh, what i felt it that i if i wanted to tell the people the story this is not beautiful like gigantic mountain but is the people how people live there and then like as we think about this lady the shepherdess who is the main central character of the shepherdess of the glacier uh, she is my sister my elder sister yeah but then uh, till i was also a shepherd in this mountain uh, like i still remember like uh, like the snow leopard the wolf the eagles are my friends and then all the sheep goat yaks are my classmates and then all these valleys is my institution that what i learned and then i wanted to tell that stories and actually she is like living in 5000 to 2 meter high without any body you know so that was something to tell her story that is not only that she is living there is a brave you know but how she live there is the most important and sometime in the winter it goes to minus 22 to minus 30 and she is manage everything and like sometime she the snow leopard wolf and uh, lynx attack sometime and then she saying you know 
we all have to live together. We I know all... that's an amazing moment yeah. in the film when she talks about the yeah uh, the snow leopard coming in and exactly yeah. all these things you know. Then I thought that you know, wow, this is like incredible story that what I wanted to tell. And then as Pawan was telling uh, also you know. Uh, because I live in Ladakh, you know, so document is, uh, it is challenging, it is difficult, but it is not so difficult that uh, we know about, but then definitely it is a technical challenges are there when I have to come to lay and then from my home, which is 70 kilometers far from the Menle city, I have to go by a car, but then I have to take the horse where she live, you know, and then I have to take all the batteries with us, with the, like me and my co-director Kirshan also. And then when we lose, like when we drop the battery on the ground in the winter and batteries then within in a second, you know, if we lose one battery, we have to come back to charge this battery in the village. So it will take another, we will lose another one week. So then somehow the everything challenges are there, but uh, finally who she is was incredible, you know. I found that she is a economist and she is a like, you know, philosopher. And in her 30 years, she never been you know, so many places, but she has so many knowledges, you know which is we can't tell, I can't express that now in my words, you know. So that's why I wanted to capture it. And always I felt because of the modernization, now so many things are like, you know, we're uh, leaving that in behind. With sort of our documentary, what we make, that is the evidence for the next generations, you know. That's why I thought the Shepherdess of the Glacier is one of uh, the evidence as people know that I wanted to wearing the Pashmina shawl, then who is this behind? Who growing these Pashmina shawls, you know? This is one, yeah, story that what we got to make opportunity, yeah. My God, it is amazing. Actually, in all your films, I just think of the, the, the filming challenges that you all must have gone through. Uh, in Stanzen's film, uh, if you just see that ice, even if you get uh, three uh, or four uh, footprints, uh, the shot is gone when she's walking in these long, huge landscapes and, you know, um, so it, it's just amazing, uh, uh, you know, the visual quality, all your three films. I think it's uh, what really strikes you is uh, this notion of the landscape and the characters being part of this landscape and this relationship uh, between uh, characters and this, uh, well, landscape is not really the, but this ecology really. Uh, and this is true of all these three films. Um, I would uh, like to problematize this a little bit. Uh, I mean, they are wonderful films. And uh, I think uh, this notion of indigenous filmmaking has become uh, a very important thing, especially I think in the 80s in New Zealand, where uh, uh, which is how the New Zealand uh, High Commission is involved in this uh, panel, where there has been a greater understanding of the need for the voice of indigenous communities. So um, how uh, I would like to ask all three of you, how conscious were you all of the fact that you all uh, I think Stanzen, of course, is from there a lot, a lot more and he, he belongs to that place. But how conscious are you of this relationship between yourself as a filmmaker who comes from the outside, in a sense, and looks at them? Uh, that's why I was very interested to hear Farida say that, you know, they were in fact participants. But uh, was there this consciousness? How did you overcome this uh, consciousness of, uh, you know, this subject, uh, subject uh, uh, filmmaker relationship. Uh, is it is it surmountable really? Is it uh, uh, is it uh, empowering for you? Uh, if you could talk a little bit about that, I think if Farida, you could talk a little about it. We could start with you. Uh, and just to say also that you know a lot of this burden of you know, uh, today, a lot of the burden falls on these communities.
to be the good community to be the environmentally conscious community to be you know so uh, you know as thinking people how do we engage with all this yeah i think i think all documentary situations that you go into it's always uh, an imbalanced situation it doesn't matter where you are you can be filming in your own city and it's an imbalanced uh, you know uh, relationship i think as documentary filmmakers i think we're always conscious about that and so it's i think it just really depends on your uh, your attitude or or what you go in with and your intent that you go in with i think that's important because sometimes that is lost you know in all these discussions uh so now in this case uh you know uh, the, uh, i mean my family comes from gujarat and i speak gujarati but i've been born and brought up in bombay you know i can't claim any insider access to the salt farming community and still i think that i think for me i think it's it's the fact that you can make bonds across these barriers you know that you i mean for me that is also why i'm a documentary filmmaker because i um can form these uh, really genuine close bonds with people whose life situations are very different from my own and so i think i think it is i think that's that's important you know and that's uh, why although i'm not a salt farmer or i'm not one of them i i, I still hope that what i show is still some sort of uh, truthful depiction of their world you know i mean given the fact that it's it's my uh, uh is i mean the film is as much about me as it is about them you know? absolutely it's your lens yeah it is my personality it is my interest it is my you know it is that but it, that doesn't mean that it is not um in some way uh, also authentic you know, really <laughs> yeah of, of, of them that you know so i think th that is um that is the thing and yeah. i i have been thinking a lot you know since this uh, topic was up an indigenous filmmaker and i said now what if i was to make a film on the bora muslim community that i was born into you know now does that make me an indigenous filmmaker and does that make it an indigenous film but i have to say that i feel i, I think i would feel much more of an outsider filming the, the the bora community than i did in the desert because i, I feel so far away from that you know i, I mm. my life journey has taken me, me so far away it's not so big a part of my identity anymore you know so we really have to talk about like what is indigenous and you know, where mm. does it where does it begin yeah so uh, yeah i i would put that to pavan because really the the notion of the indigenous i think comes out of uh, of the uh, of colonization where you say that uh, you want to break out of uh, uh, what is this outside gaze which was always uh, put on um, on anything that was the other in a sense right. so um, and of course i think the notion of the indigenous very strongly is uh, rooted in um, uh, you know in cultures like uh, uh, new zealand uh, the australias in the americas where there has been real decimation of a different kind and therefore there has to be an emergence of a stronger voice but in the indian context i'm not so sure whether you know uh, we can look at it in the same way uh because uh, as you say uh, filmmaking uh here ha i mean filmmakers are able to sort of cross over in a sense uh there is uh, uh, of course need for communities to have their own voices which is happening which is what i'll come to a little later with a greater uh you know means of uh, communication etc now you know with the video explosion of course people are getting more and more empowered to use and say it themselves uh pavan how did it feel like for you and uh, uh making this film and uh, uh your sense with the community 
your mute sir uh i i don't live in the lake but uh, i'm I, i belong to the same community uh, yeah so we, we we people are called mitais so the people living on the lake they are also mitais uh you know as i said earlier i you know documentary has taught me so much you know for me documentary is like you know modern fiction films for me you know uh, i've done short films i think it's more cinematic i mean you are dependent on so many people you're not just the uh, people whom you are filming it's it's about the camera person the editor sound recorders you know we we depend on each other you know it's it's like a you know real team work actually for me happens in uh, i think it happens in documentary and uh, this uh, as as i wanted to continue that process so even in the crew you know the whole feature film uh we had uh, around six people in the crew you know we shot the entire film it's a fiction feature film but we shot the whole film with a you know a crew member six crew members and uh, also you know since i've made i wanted I, since i've done the documentary it was it was you know they somehow you know i have built that relationship i have you know i've done a lot of documentaries so all the all my characters or all my you know i have still you know i still continue that relationship with them so i think that that thing actually helps me uh, helps me in making the fiction film and in casting the characters because they kind of you know we have i have a certain kind of bonding with my uh, with my with them and so they kind of believe in what i was doing and so that really helped in you know, i think uh, making what lady of the lake is today uh so i think that that process was very important for me and uh, also bringing in their stories you know same story bringing in fiction i'm not talking particularly about my documentary because i want to uh, mention about lady of the lake so so i i brought their stories in the in 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 in, in the in the fiction and they were telling their stories in front of the camera you know so it, it was not like i know i was not giving them dialogue they have you know they they have faced a situation so i tell them how do you react to such kind of situation and i think after after a point you know the everything becomes very you know i maybe in english term maybe organic or something uh, so you know so they they became so natural it became so natural for them and uh, you know so it was just coming out you know the, the, they, they were not acting in front of the camera they were like they were just expressing themselves after a point of time i think so that that building that relationship what documentary has taught me has really helped me, me in my film making uh, did you uh, take the film back to them and uh, what was the the sense after they themselves i mean the community watched the film the, the, the first screening was uh, here in uh, in pal uh, you know I, all of them were here uh so i arranged a bus and they all came and we were, and like they were laughing throughout the film not like the <laughs> documentary <laughs> when it was a fiction film i mean they were i i was just observing them how they react maybe it was it was the dialogues <laughs> or maybe they are seeing themselves on the but it's 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 the feeling is very different when you saw the document you know the uh, saw them the documentary and the, saw them the fiction so maybe uh yeah maybe you know the, so they see themselves acting maybe acting a little bit uh but it's the feeling is very different when you show a documentary in a fiction film because bo- the the main character uh in the fiction film they are real time couples and they are the first people whom i met while uh, going for the recce of my feature film so uh you know even now also they they are very close yesterday also they brought fish from the <laughs> lake <laughs> they come to impal regularly to sell fish yeah uh and uh, stanzen i think uh it would have been impossible for you to make this film if uh, you did not actually belong uh, over there so uh, tell me um how did you i mean how did you uh, get to do it and did you uh, i mean because i'm just interested in the language you know it's literally language how did you make her 
talk like this? How did you, um, and has she seen the film and what has been her reaction to this? Uh, because it's quite uh, amazing this uh, character, how she unfolds slowly against this landscape. Uh, so if you could just talk a little about that. Uh, yeah, when uh, we are doing this uh, movie, like I know her because since like when I was uh, five years till 11 years, I was like her brother. Then I, I was also like her best friend. And then what she could tell us is amazing because as in the beginning, I was just telling that, you know, we don't want to only shoot this sort of uh, like flashed, uh, like, you know, in drawn and moving camera. And I just wanted to show her hearts, you know, who sitting is itself. That is quite very difficult. But then one thing I never forget when I was 14 years old, my father took me in a barley field. And in the barley field, there was a small worm is going like that, you know. And I tried to kill that worm and my father put a uh, hand on my shoulder. Look, son, then. If you kill this small worm, tomorrow birds will not come on to our, uh, our field. If the birds will not come to our field, then you will, uh, like, you know, our cows and our sheep and goats, yaks are not healthy. And then what you drink the milk? And then this milk is coming from all this connectivity, you know. So that why that was something very stark to me, and then being a farmer, we give a food for all, you know, from small insect till the birds, you know. That always you must you must remember to it. And then while doing this movie, what I always is helped me, it is each time as a human when we travel to Delhi or when we travel to out of uh, like overseas, human get foods and accommodation everywhere, you know. But the animals know there is a very special, uh, like, you know, species, you know. So to have an animal is another very interesting, you know. That process is very important, but that process is we will not see only from our eyes. We have to live with them. And in the beginning, uh, we went with our crew, with me and my co-director, Kishan Modelate and Mini. And we went with the big cameras, tripod and everything. And she was always smile and she was always trying to do the best thing, you know. And then I think this is no, no, I'm, I'm not wanted to do this movie again and only what, uh, like, like what <laughs> in and I said, no. And then what I did, and she don't know all this technology, I put a lapel mic on her and she was going in the mountain and she was alone speaking. She was singing so beautifully with the animals, you know. And I record it when we come back in the tent in the evening. I got time. I, I look, sister, you are so beautifully. You are a very good singer. And she then opened to me, you know. And then what I did, I was. Uh, I don't want to shoot this movie in one week, two week, in three weeks. I want to becoming a again shepherd like her, you know. Then I want to, but I have time like three years. But that why movie took me three years to complete, you know. And we shoot it more than 80 hours. So like, I don't know how I'll express you. There was like another, I can write the book on her, you know, like uh, then she was open and she was very shy with the big camera and all these things. And when she started speaking, she was nonstop, you know, she was start speaking, speaking, you know, speaking about the animals, speaking about the mountain, speaking about the half, speaking about this, you know. And one day, even like uh, she was, Talk, talking about all this, how she was relations with these birds, snow leopards, eagles and all, you know. It all are amazing, you know. So that what I thought, you know, because as a, we all are filmmaker, one day we all will die, you know. So these films or the evidence, you know, this all will live for centuries and generations, you know. That's why always I felt that when I get some difficulties, I say it's not difficulties because there's going to recording, you know. So next we'll use this, you know. That give me a strength and interest <laughs> to do, yeah. Has she seen the film? Oh, 
Yeah, uh, she was uh, like invited to uh, in France, uh, all my friends and that movie was in, in the channels and it was there. And, and uh, when we were invited there in the Auto International Film Festival, there was a big screening and when she came to uh, screening and she was always doing like this, no, 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 I don't want to see me on the screening. And when she was start speaking, no, no, my voice is not so good. And finally, when she saw her animals and she start crying, you know, she, her tears are rolling through her eyes. I miss my animals, you know. And that was the first uh, very reaction to me. And after that, uh, she was invited for many uh, dinners and all this. And she was in the end, you know, it was a big uh, uh, festival in Auto International Film, almost like four or 5,000 people were there. And everybody was clapping to her. And what she told me, you know, Sanjin, you know, my job is also important, you know. When I was doing this shepherd job in Ladakh, nobody is giving importance to me. I was nothing you know, in the mountain. I'm like backward. And here everybody was really encouraging. And then whatever we saw there and we came back to Ladakh. And I thought now she will see other countries, other are cities, and she will say she will not do any more the shepherdess. And she think, stands in, I wanted to go back in the mountain. I want to die in the mountain, you know. And what you did for this movie is so important. Is there any shepherd school, a shepherd university? Or there's <laughs> no? Yeah. So I have the wish that somebody will also do a shepherd university, that this sheep and goat will not lose in the mountain, you know. And after that, what she asked me is, please, we are, it was so difficult to live in the winter, all this in 10 minus 20, no facilities at all. Can you make a shepherd house and shepherd uh, small houses, all this valley? I say it is quite difficult. Then mm -hmm. me and all the, um, our friends, what we got money to the award and that all money today, we are already constructed I think around 16 shepherd house in all this valley. They are living in winter. Oh, fantastic. Houses. This is what the impact of uh, little movies. And that she's happy. And she was keep saying, please, now I'm looking forward to have a shepherd school and shepherd university. That's our dream. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Uh, Farida, uh, uh, to talk about, uh, have they taken to taking uh, shooting themselves? Have you... Uh, uh, has the experience with you because now uh, you know on YouTube etc you find a lot of stuff where uh, communities are shooting themselves shooting their own rituals shooting their own you know so there is a kind of voice emerging may not be in the uh, kind of uh, uh, way of let's say big documentary films or very uh, but there is, um, you know, a bit of self-reflexiveness coming. Uh, ha has that happened? Is there, uh, uh, have, have, has it been sort of spurred by them seeing you work and seeing how well your film and how people have reacted to your film? Your, your mute, sorry. No, I wanted to say, no, not that, not that I'm aware of, no. Uh, of course, with the mobile phone now, uh they are you know yeah always doing something with the mobile phone you know but whether that you know becomes a little film that they put on it's, it's not that i'm aware of i mean my reaction was very similar to pubans you know when i screened the film for them for the first time because also for us uh, we had to find uh, because there's no electricity there we had to oh. find a to, you know, have a projector that we could project. Uh, we had to find some battery operated projector and, and you know, we had to wait till it got dark. And so we put a bed sheet up and they all watched it. And, and I was, uh, it's always very difficult to show the film for the first time to the protagonist because I was very nervous. And that I thought he fun. was such a st uh, stickler for how things have to be done. And he will certainly find fault with not showing some process correctly. But uh, absolutely not. It was just like, as Pavan said, they were laughing, they were enjoying. You know, it's a 92 minute film. By the time it got over, it was 11 o'clock. And then they said, oh, let's start it again. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so it was it was really lovely lovely to watch it with them very different experience yeah okay yeah. well i think we've just run out of time uh, mm-hmm. but i'd just like to uh, sort of make a point here that uh, uh, while uh, you know uh, this kind of filmmaking is sometimes criticized i really think that your films all three of these films are such um uh, such moving and uh, so uh, actually uh, uh, touching that you all become strong voices for the community i think that is the important thing that it's not whether you belong or not belong but it is to sort of reach the truth of the experience so i really congratulate you all and i uh, so so pleased that these three films are on and i really encourage everybody to see these films these are really important films uh, and i congratulate diff on this uh for putting this together and showing these films and we look forward to uh, more work from all of you and uh, it will be wonderful to see it up like this again especially in pandemic times when we are not being able to uh, actually meet and so thank you so much thank you thanks for being here thank you so much bye you. see you bye.